Welcome to Using the Parse API Console. My name is Bjorn Kaiser, and I'm a developer support engineer here at Facebook. Today I'm going to show you how you can make use of the Parse API Console to work with our REST API while you are building your app. Let's have a look at the app we will be working on today. We're going to build an instant messaging app and want to make sure that only the sender and the receiver of the message have access to the messages sent. For this, we're going to use class level permissions in the Parse API console to check that the permissions are actually working and that the data is safe. So let's have a quick look at our app. It currently consists about the basic collections, which is the installation collection, which stores in device information. We have roles, where we already have a user role, sessions, where all the session information will be stored, the user collection with all our users and our message collection, which will contain all the messages sent in our app. So a messaging app without any messages seems kind of boring. So let's head over to the API console and send some messages. As you can see here, you have the ability to choose the HTTP method you want to use. You can define an API path, which in our case will be classes message to create or read objects from the message collection. You can use the master key for requests that require a master key. You can use the run as feature to run a specific request as a user of your app, which will run the request as if you would be logged in as that user. And for here for get requests, you can define the query string, which is useful if you want to run queries against your data, or if you are making a post request, you will define the payload of the request here. So let's go ahead and send a message from our user John to our user Jane. We're gonna to switch to the post method. We're gonna put the payload in here. I already prepared that. I'm just gonna run you through it real quick. We set the text field to hello Jane. The rat status is obviously false. From is gonna be a pointer which will point to the user object of John. And the to field is a pointer as well, which will point to the user object of Jane. In most cases, you can just create new objects in the data browser, which would be much simpler. But for this example, we will just use the API console. So everything's set up here. Let's send this request. And the message has been created. So we can now go ahead, copy and paste the object ID of the message we just created, and just run a simple get request. So you can see here, the message is returned. See, hello Jane, it's from John to Jane. So the problem here is, we ran that request as an unauthenticated user, which in the end means that everyone that has access to the application ID and our REST API key or the corresponding client keys for mobile apps could read all the messages, which they're not supposed to. So let's head back to our message collection and add some security. Click on the security button here and add the users row. So we are going to do, we're going to disable public read and write access and we will only allow users that are part of the users role to read and write to our collection. So this by itself is not perfect security as it would still allow every user to read other users' messages, but it would be out of scope of this tutorial to go into detail on ACLs and CLPs, but I'll highly encourage you to go to the parse block and read about all the security features you can use today. So now we can go back to the API console and run the get request on the message class again, which should return all messages sent. However, now that we are not authenticated anymore, we are not allowed to perform the find operation on the message collection. We can easily fix this by using the run as feature and run the request as John, who is a member of the user role. And you can see the messages will be returned. So from now on, only authenticated users will be able to read and write messages, which is a very good thing. So now, Let's have Jane reply to John's message. We don't have to use to run that request as John, but we will run it as Jane. See, all requests will be run as Jane. Again, it's the same payload as we had before. Switch.
switch back to post, send the message, and let's send another message right after that. So now if we go switch back to the get method, just remove this here, we can see all the messages that have been sent. First messages, hey John, from Jane to John, barbecue tonight at 7, hey Jane. So what we could do now is we could run a query to fetch all the messages that have been sent by John. Let's switch back to John. So a query is run by using a get request and providing the constraints in the query string. Let me just run you through it real quick. We're gonna set the where field of our query and make an equal to query on the from field, which is a pointer in our case, and say, hey, please give me everything where the from field equals this pointer, which is John. Let's go ahead and hit send request. Perfect. You can now see that it will only return messages that actually have been sent by John, and not all the messages that have been sent by Jane as well. So now let's go ahead, have a look at the data here. It was like, well, eh, maybe Jane changed her mind and she doesn't want to have barbecue anymore at seven. So let's go ahead and actually delete that message. So we can go back to the API console, change the method back to delete, and simply run a delete request, which doesn't return anything, any data, so the request should have ran fine. This is only a small piece of what you can actually do with the API console. As I said, you can fetch objects, you can create objects, you can modify objects, and you can delete objects. You can also run queries using the master key, which is very useful if you, for example, want to run a certain cloud function or a background job which requires uh, the master key. You can run requests as a specific user, which is very helpful when you want to debug ACLs and class level permissions to really make sure that only the data is returned that a specific user of your app is supposed to see. So there are way more endpoints that we could call here and things we could add. So I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial and happy building.